Susano, the unruly god of the storm and seas, was once an honored resident of Takamagahara, the heavenly plain. However, his destructive and mischievous nature led him to be casted down to earth by his father, Izanagi, and his sister, Amaterasu. His descent from the heavens did not mark an end but the beginning of an odyssey that would carve his name into the annals of legend. Riding the clouds as his chariot, with the winds as his companions, Susano traversed the land, a god in search of a new purpose. From the moment his feet touched the earth, Susano was set apart from both gods and men. His spirit, as wild as the tempestuous sea, did not know defeat. Though he was banished for his untamed nature, he did not seek retribution. Instead, he yearned for meaning in a world far removed from the divine realms above. His journey was one not just of distance, but of the soul, seeking a place where he could belong, where his might and heart could find true expression. As fate would have it, Susano's path led him to a scene of profound sorrow. In a secluded corner of the land, he encountered two earthly deities, also known as Kunitsukami. Their names were Ashinazuchi and Tenazuchi. The couple's eyes were brimming with tears, and their spirits were crushed under the weight of an impending loss. Beside them stood their daughter, Kushinada Hime, whose fate was hanging by a thread. The couple shared their tale of despair with Suzano, their expressions and words heavy with the pain of their loss. Orochi, a serpent of nightmares, had claimed seven of their eight daughters one by one, leaving only Kushinada Hime. Now, the monster demanded her as its next sacrifice. Orochi was no ordinary creature, but a terror of the natural world. He possessed eight heads and tails. Its very presence was a blight upon the land. Their story was one of repeated tragedy, a cycle of sacrifice that seemed unbreakable. Each year, as the time drew near, their hearts grew heavy, knowing the fate that awaited their child. Yet, in their darkest hour, they found a glimmer of hope in the presence of Susano, a god who had wandered into their lives from the realms above. This meeting was no mere coincidence, but a twist of fate that would alter the course of their lives and the land itself. Susano, moved by their plight, saw in their sorrow a chance to redefine his own destiny. In the face of their despair, he found a purpose worthy of his divine status. A challenge to test his strength and atonement for his past actions. In the tears of the elderly couple and the bravery of Kushinada Hime, Susano found what he had been seeking. Here, amid the beauty and tranquility of the earthly realm, he would take a stand not just for the sake of one family, but for the future of all who lived in the shadow of Orochi. Orochi, the terror that stalked the lands, was no mere myth, but a living nightmare. He was a beast of unparalleled ferocity, a blend between a dragon and a serpent, believed to have emerged from the primordial forces of chaos. With his eight heads crowned with menace and eight tails armed with destruction, he was a symbol of nature's untamed and primal fury. Similar to the Hydra from Greek mythology, each head, a sovereign entity of malice, harbored a gaze that could pierce the soul and jaws that spelled doom for the innocent. Its demand was as ancient as the hills, a maiden sacrifice to satiate its hunger, a tribute to stave off its wrath for yet another year. This serpent was not just a creature of physical dread. It was the embodiment of the fears that lurked in the hearts of men. Its very name, Orochi, was a whisper of terror, a harbinger of despair that silenced the bravest of warriors and brought entire villages to their knees in dread. Its existence was a curse upon the land, an unending cycle of sorrow that left a trail of tears and shattered dreams in its wake. Yearly, as the sacrificial rite approached, the air would thicken with despair, the skies would darken with the weight of impending doom, and the land itself would seem to mourn the loss of yet another of its daughters. Orochi's reign was more than a tyranny of fear. It was a testament to the power of the dark, a reminder of the fragility of life and the inexorable advance of fate. Witnessing the anguish of an elderly couple destined to lose their last daughter to the monstrous Orochi, Susano's heart stirred with a resolve as fierce as the storms he wielded. Here amid the sorrow, he saw a beacon of purpose, a chance to wield his divine might for a cause greater than himself. 
Suzano promised to slay the beast and vowed to take Kushinada Hime's hand in marriage upon his victory. This was no mere pledge, but a turning point, a moment where fate beckoned Suzano to rise beyond his past. With the blessing of Kushinada Hime's parents, a plan began to take shape. This was a strategy that required not just brute strength, but the cunning wisdom of a god. Suzano, once a wanderer cast down from the heavens, now stood as the only barrier between Orochi and his next victim. Suzano's approach to the impending battle was as innovative as it was daring. Understanding that a direct confrontation with Orochi might not yield victory, he turned to more creative means. He brewed a sake with the potency to fell even the mightiest of foes. This was no ordinary sake, but a concoction steeped in divine magic, capable of bringing the fearsome Orochi to a state of vulnerability. With meticulous care, Suzano orchestrated the construction of eight gates, each to serve as a table for his enchanted sake. This strategic placement was designed to exploit Orochi's greed, ensuring that each of its eight heads would be lured separately into intoxication. The gates were not just traps, but symbols of Susano's tactical genius, showcasing his resolve to protect the land and its people from the serpent's wrath. Next, Susano transformed Kushinada Hime into a simple comb. Vowing to protect her, Susano concealed Kushinada Hime safely within his hair, hidden from the prying eyes of Orochi. As the preparations drew to a close, the stage was set for a confrontation that would echo through the ages. Susano, armed with his wits, strength and a plan as bold as the heavens themselves, stood ready to face the beast. The battle that loomed on the horizon was more than a fight between a god and a monster. It was a clash of destinies, a moment where the future of the land and its people hung in the balance. As dusk turned to night, a hush fell over the land, an eerie calm before the storm. At the gates, the barrels of sake stood ready, a trap for the dreaded Orochi. Lured by the intoxicating aroma of the sake, the serpent approached, its many heads weaving through the darkness towards their doom. One by one they drank, the potent brew dulling the senses of the beast. Before long, each head of Orochi had fallen asleep. It was in this moment of vulnerability that Susano made his move. With a battle cry that split the night and reached the far corners of the heavens, and revealed himself, a god in full might, sword drawn, and eyes burning with the fire of battle. Susano, embodying the storm's unpredictable fury, struck Orochi with his sword. With the first strike, he severed a head, waking the mighty beast. Even in his inebriated state, Orochi was a formidable opponent. His many heads, each a force of destruction, struck with venomous precision. Susano fended off each attack while taking every opportunity to strike back at Orochi. With each strike, he severed a head, causing the bodies of the beast to wither in agony. This dance of attack and defense continued, until at last, silence fell upon the battlefield. Orochi laid defeated, his reign of terror ended by the hands of the storm god. In the quiet that followed the storm, Susano stood victorious, proud that he had fulfilled his promise. As he observed the battlefield, his gaze fell upon the tail of Orochi. An object appeared to be gleaming from the tip of his tail. Suzano approached it and extracted an elegant sword. This was the Kusanagi no Tsurugi. This was no mere sword, but a relic of immense power and significance. In its gleaming blade, Suzano found not just victory, but a symbol of his renewed purpose his past misdeeds cleansed by the valor and courage he had shown. Suzano had not only liberated Kushinada Hime and her grieving parents from the clutches of despair, but had also restored a balance to the world teetering on the brink of chaos. The Kusanagi no Tsurugi, henceforth one of the imperial regalia of Japan, emerged as a symbol of authority, the unbreakable spirit of the nation and the legacy of Suzano's indomitable will. In the aftermath of a battle that had reshaped the destiny of the land, Suzano stood true to his word. He married Kushinada Hime in a ceremony that was as much a celebration of their love 
as it was a testament to the new era of peace and prosperity that their union heralded. This marriage was not just the culmination of a promise made in the heat of battle. It was the beginning of a legacy, a union blessed by the divine and celebrated by mortals. Susano then constructed a palace for his wife, called Suka, where he appointed his new father-in-law, Ashinazuchi, as the head of the palace. Kushinada Hime goes on to become known as the goddess of agriculture, love, and childbirth. Susano and Kushinada Hime also managed to give birth to many children. Too many to name, in fact, but two of the most well-known are Yashimajinumi and Okuninushi. While Susano had now defeated Orochi and married Kushinada Hime, there was one more thing he needed to do. Having realized the error in his ways, Susano wished for redemption and forgiveness from his family above. Defying the terms of his banishment, Susano traveled back to Takamagahara. As soon as his presence was felt, the other gods were immediately on high alert. The last time Susano was here, he destroyed many rice fields and caused Amaterasu to go into hiding, leaving the world in a state of prolonged darkness. The gods feared the destruction that was about to come. Amaterasu and Izanagi emerged from their palace to intercept Suzano and stop him before he could cause any harm. To their surprise, Suzano appeared different. His demeanor was different and his aura was calm. Still, they approached him with hostility and questioned his motives. It was then that Suzano revealed his intentions. He explained what he has been through since his banishment and how he now sees the error in his ways. He explained that he only sought forgiveness from his sister and father and presented the Kusanagi no Tsurugi as a sign of his atonement. Though initially skeptical, Amaterasu and Izanagi accepted the gift and forgave Suzano. Once amends were made, Izanagi presented him with one final task. Izanagi asked Suzano to take his place as guardian of the gateway to Yomi, the underworld. Suzano accepted the position, where he is believed to still serve today. The myth of Suzano and Orochi is a rich story filled with themes that resonate deeply within the human spirit. At its core, it is a narrative of redemption, chronicling Susano's transformation. In the end, Susano's story is one about making things right and finding where you belong. Once thrown out of heaven for his wild ways, Susano didn't just wander the earth without aim, he found a purpose. His journey took him from being a stormy outcast to a hero who saved the land from a terrifying monster, Orochi. By marrying Kushinada Hime and building a life with her, he started a new chapter, one filled with hope and peace. Orochi stands as a symbol of the chaotic and destructive forces that life can unleash, representing the trials and tribulations that every soul must navigate. The serpent's defeat by Susano is more than a mere victory. It is a profound statement on the human condition. It speaks to our innate capacity to overcome adversity serving as a powerful reminder that within each of us lies the strength to confront our darkest fears and emerge triumphant. The discovery of the Kusanagi no Tsurugi in the aftermath of the battle further enriches the myth's symbolism. Emerging from the darkness of Orochi's tale, the sword becomes a metaphor for the unexpected gifts that life's trials can bestow upon us. It embodies the virtues of bravery and wisdom, virtues that are essential not only for the survival of the individual, but for the harmony and balance of the world at large. Going back home, he faced his sister and father, not with the stormy anger of before, but with a calm wish to make amends. He showed them the legendary sword he got from defeating Orochi, not as a trophy, but as a sign he had changed. The tale of Suzano, Kushinada Hime, and Orochi is a timeless reminder of the resilience of the human spirit the power of love, and the ever-present possibility of redemption in the face of darkness. Susano's tale is more than just an adventure. It's a reminder that everyone can change for the better, make amends, and find their true place in the world. It tells us that it's okay to make mistakes as long as we learn from them and try to fix them. And most importantly, it shows us that even the mightiest among us have something to learn about forgiveness, love, and responsibility. Through storms and battles, peace and love, Susano's life teaches us about the power of change and finding where we truly belong. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. 
I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. What did you think? Did I miss any details? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome to the channel. I hope I earned a like and subscription in your eyes. If not, that's okay. I'll keep making videos until I do earn it. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. I truly appreciate all the views, likes, subscriptions, and kind words and messages. Without you, this channel wouldn't be here today. That's it for now. I hope to see you all in the next one.